we have to admit, I think in, in various degrees, obviously, that in terms of our physical health, we're not always well, right? There's always, there's always something that we need to get fixed. You know, and as we get older, they seem to be more of them, you know, and the problems seem to be prolonged, and maybe even the problems will never be fixed, you know, whether it's we need a new knee or, or just the aches and pains, or maybe it's our blood pressure, you, you know. Again, I'm, I'm 41. I'm starting to enter into that phase of life, so to speak. Um, but in that, what do we do? We, we, we go in and we see a doctor, you know. And then in terms of our mental health, you know, again, we, we have various degrees. Some people, you know, need a lot of help, um, struggle with a lot of things. And for many of us, maybe it's just maybe a little minor depression or a lot of stress and anxiety. You know, we're still able to manage our lives. Um, but, you know, they weigh on us. They weigh down on us. You know, and so when it comes to our physical and mental health, we can, we can always say or sometimes say, you know, I'm not well or I'm not okay. And yet sometimes we struggle to say that in our, in our discipleship, in our life of faith. I'm not well. I'm not okay. You know, and that I refer to the reality of sin. You know, in the gospel passage today, John the Baptist is in the desert, in the place where all the distractions are, are gone away. You know, the desert is a very barren place. There's nothing there to distract us. It's just us and the voice of God. And so John the Baptist is out there preaching, preaching and listening to the word of God. And what is he doing? He's baptizing for what? For the repentance. The word literally in the Greek, metanoia, which means to literally turn around. Turn, change your direction in life. You know, to stop, turn around, and proceed in a different direction. And then the Sadducees and Pharisees come, you know, and these, these, these Sadducees, these Pharisees, they were highly esteemed among the people. The people admired how well they knew the law and how well they followed the law. They were the religious leaders. They were the people that everyone else looked up to and told them how, how wonderful and great they are. And you know what? Many of them actually believed it, <laughs> you know, but John the Baptist didn't. You brood of vipers. He's very direct, very direct because, again, because they, they held themselves in such highly esteemed. They look down at everyone else. John the Baptist is calling them out. You have to repent too. You're not well. You need to be healed. And so his message is not a message that's meant to, to put us down. It's not a message to say, oh, you're, you're despicable, you're a sinner. No, no. The reason why he's there is the reason why he's saying, you know, turn around is because a great physician is coming. We call Jesus not only a divine physician, a healer, but we also call him a savior. A savior who's going to save us from our sins. Because sure enough, we can't do it ourselves. How many of you go to confession and conf confess the same sin over and over and over again and you get discouraged? You get discouraged because you can't seem to fix this problem, you know? You come into confession, or well, we come to confession, you know, I struggle with this too. You know, we come into confession and we say something like, you know, Father, I, every time I come in here, I always confess saying bad language, you know? And you come in and you say it again, you know, I, I've, I said bad words and you tell yourself, I'm never going to do it again. And then sure enough, you go right out into the parking lot, you, you drive right out into the streets of Redden and then there's two double parked cars right there in front of you and you can't get around. And all of a sudden, you know, bleep, 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 <laughs> you know, in a matter of minutes, has that ever happened to you, you know, we can't fix ourselves. We are not well. You know, we're not well in terms of sin. 
but we have a Savior. That's the message. That's the message that John the Baptist wants to point out to us, to turn around and to look at the one who is coming towards us, Jesus Christ. If we look at the cross, we look at the cross, we see two things in the cross. First and foremost, we see the amounts of love, divine love that is coming from it. He chose the cross. He chose to be the sacrificial victim, not because we earned it, but because of his great love and his desire for us to be reconciled to him. But also, not only do we see the great love, though, we also see the gravity of our sins. We have to be honest with ourselves with that. You know, he did it as a sin offering for us, which means what? We committed sin. But remember, he was so happy to do it. He wanted to do it. And so now we continue to encounter this great healer, this divine physician in the sacrament of confession, which again, why Father Kuna and I, we're having confessions before the Sunday Mass during Advent. We have it now Monday nights from seven o'clock at, at the chapel in Perk Yeoman. Again, it's all just opportunities to admit and to get some healing and to say, yeah, yeah, I struggle. I struggle sometimes. Virtue is hard. It's hard because of our fallen condition, our, our condition and, and proneness to, to sin. But Christ is so ready and eager to help us. It's okay to admit that we're not well. We can do it in our physical health. We can do it in our mental health. But let's also do it in our spiritual health. May God bless you.